Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Uh, today is Friday the 19th of May. So let's pray as we start this new day afresh, um, second day of during the period of ascension. So let's 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 pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be praised and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation. Pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed, <coughs> and the day lies open before us, let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the peoples. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. That, that canticle was from Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. Let's do the psalm. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 81. Psalm 81. So first the refrain. Oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Sing merrily to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Take up the song and sound the timbrel, the tuneful lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon and at the full moon upon our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. The charge he laid on the people of Joseph when they came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not know that said, I eased their shoulder from the burden. Their hands were set free from bearing the load. You called upon me in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and proved you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, Open your mouth wide, and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice, 
and Israel would not obey me. So I sent them away in the stubbornness of their hearts and let them walk after their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I should soon put down their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those who hate the Lord would be humbled before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and with honey from the rock would I satisfy them. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. And our prayer. Father of mercy, keep us joyful in your salvation and faithful in your, to your covenant. And as we journey to your kingdom, ever feed us with the bread of life your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's do the, the collect and before we go to our reading. For the collect for this for this this day for today O oh God the King of glory you have exalted your son Jesus Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven we beseech you leave us not comfortless but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Savior Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so our reading, our first reading. Our first reading is from uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29, from verse 2 to 15. Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, Your eyes have seen all that the Lord did in Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his officials, and to all his land. With your own eyes you saw those great trials, those signs and great wonders. But to this day the Lord has not given you a mind that understands or eyes that see or ears that hear. Yet the Lord says, During the forty years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. 
I did this so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reach this place, Sion, king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out to fight against us. But we defeated them. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Carefully follow the, the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. All of you are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God, your leaders and chief men, your elders and officials, and all the other men of Israel, together with your children and your wives and the foreigners living in your camps who chop your wood and carry your water. You are standing here in order to enter into a covenant with the Lord your God. A covenant the Lord is making with you this day and sealing with an oath to confirm you this day as his people. That he may be your God as he promised you and as he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I am making this covenant with this with its oath, not only with you who are standing here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. Amen. So the Moses is renewing the covenant. This is the covenant, of course, that, that God originally made at Sinai with the people when they crossed over. The Red Sea, and now Moses at the very, at the very, um, the cusp of entering into the Promised Land, they are in, Moses is calling the people to renew their covenant relationship with God. Uh, that is to, to 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 remember what God has promised to them, that God will keep them, God will bless them, and also what they their obligations of the covenant will be that is to to obey to obey God and to do as he commands so this is a, a renewal of the covenant and uh, you know sisters and brothers it is always good uh, to to do that <laughs> to renew our covenantal relationship with God um, you know um, our covenant as it were or the or began at our baptism that's when it's that's when the, the, the that 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 relationship with God started. But throughout our Christian life, it is it is fitting and right for us to renew that that bond, that relationship. Sometimes we we we, we may undergo a, a sprinkling of water. We may we may to simply kneel before God and and recommit ourselves and in a sense we we do that every time we 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 say the creed because uh, the creed we have to we say the creed at our baptism which is the sign of our covenant relationship the promise to 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 obey you know and and so every time we say the creed we are doing that but which would probably mean every sunday is a covenant renewal sunday but there are special times in our relationship with God that we need to take stock, as it were, and go back to God and say, Lord, you know, I, I recognize the relationship and, and the faithfulness that you have in our life in protecting and keeping us, in keeping me. And so now I renew my, 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 my covenant with you to obey you to live for you, to be faithful to your to the task that you have given to me. That is a we need to remind ourselves of these sisters, sisters and brothers. Otherwise we go astray. All right, let's move forward into our second reading, which is first John, first John chapter one. This is first John just before the, the last book of the Bible, Revelation. We have First John, First, Second, Third John, and Jude. 
1 John chapter 1. We read from verse 1 to chapter 2 and verse 6. <clears throat> that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him, must live as Jesus did. Amen. All right. Uh, I think, yes, that's it. So, John, uh, this is John's letter to the, to the believers. And, it's, you know, John, both his epistle, his letter and revelation that he wrote are very packed with truth in you know almost in every line and it's it's it's, it's so difficult to unpack this truth in a small in 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 a, in, a, in a little time but let's just pull out a few things the first in this first chapter of course paul well, john is talking about the the coming of christ the incarnation of of god really on, on and so he said uh, that which we that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we looked on this we proclaim concerning the word of life and he says this life appeared the word of life this life appeared and he he is eternal life and then he said in, in he said this is the son jesus christ 
And he says, I'm doing this because I want you to have the fellowship, to enter into this fellowship of, of God through Jesus Christ, the, the fellowship that we, I have, we have, the, the eyewitnesses. He was an eyewitness to Jesus. So he says, what we have seen and heard and we testify, we are telling you about. Um, so, so, so it was important that the disciples, the, these first apostles, were eyewitnesses because by seeing and hearing, they are able to testify to what they have seen and heard uh, to the rest of us. And then he says, of course, that this great section about forgiveness and sin and light and darkness. In God, there is no light, dark, darkness, only light, because God is pure light. Uh, God is pure light. And therefore, the darkness here is, of course, sin. He says, if anyone sins, you know, if we, we, we claim, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not enough. We are not light. God is light. God is pure light. But in his light, we can be forgiven. We can we can reflect his light in our lives. We are darkness because sin is darkness, but God is pure light. And so if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us. He is, he is faithful and just. He is righteous enough to, 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 to take us out of the darkness and to bring us into his light. Uh, yeah, and let's let's leave it there. I mean, there's more, but um, I don't want to get too bogged down here. Um, I think that 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 verse, if if we confess our sins, of course we we say that before we confess our sins on a in in a, in a, in, a, in a worship service in the Eucharistic service. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. Um, it means, sisters and brothers, we should come before God recognizing our sin, recognizing that we do sin. He says, if we claim to have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar and the word is, his word is not in us. In other words, uh, you know, if we say we are, we have no darkness in us, then we are making God to be a liar because God is the only one who has no darkness in him. God is the one, the only one who is pure light. All of us have darkness in us. And so if we claim to have no sin, or if we claim to be without sin, he says in verse 8, if we claim we have never sinned, um, or we do not sin even now. And then he says, I write this so that you do not sin. So on the one hand, he says, um, we, we, there's no one who can claim that they do not sin. You know, if you say that, you are making God out to be a liar because God says we sin. But then he says, I want you. I'm writing so that you don't sin. So in other words, do strive not to sin. I know, yeah, I know you do sin, but strive not to sin. Seek, seek daily to live above sin. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know you will fail, but try, seek to do this. So he says, I write to you so that you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we, do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Jesus is our advocate in heaven. Jesus is the one pleading for our case, as it were. Our, the one who, who stands for us in the presence of the Father. You know, just like Moses was, was the advocate of the people of Israel. And he would go to God and say, Lord, you know, deliver these people, save these people, and so on. Do not, do not pour out your wrath upon them. Jesus does the same thing. The only difference is that Jesus does it with his own, with his own life, with his own sacrifice, his own blood. His own blood is the atoning sacrifice. So verse 2, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The reason he can be our advocate is because he died for us. The reason he is our, the one who advocates, advocates for us, who pleads on our behalf, is because he died for us. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so in, 
through him, our sins will be are forgiven. We say, yes, we, we, we do sin, but we are to seek to live above sin. But when we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the one who, had, who, who made the atoning sacrifice for us, so that when we come, we can come and confess our sins. And he is faithful and just. And he will forgive us and take us out of the darkness and bring us into the light of God. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we are grateful for your goodness and mercy to us this new day. We thank you, Lord, for, the, for, uh, for life. We thank you for Jesus, our atoning sacrifice, the one who gave his life for us so that he, he can become our advocate in heaven. As the Lord, we come. We come in his name, our oh, Father. We come because of what Jesus Christ has done for us so that our sins can be forgiven, so that we will walk in the light and not in the darkness. Forgive us, O oh Lord, of our shortcomings. Forgive us of all our failures. Forgive us of the times when we do not trust you. Forgive us of our sins. And all the times, Lord, every moment of every day, Forgive us for the sins of this morning. Today, forgive us of the sins that we will, that we will commit all throughout this day in thought and word and deed. The sin of commission, doing the things that we ought not to do, and the sins of omission, neglecting to do the things the right things, the good things that we ought to do. Forgive us, Lord, through the merits of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his atoning sacrifice for us. Forgive us and restore us and shine your light into the darkness of our lives so that we will reflect your light to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father, we pray for your church. We pray especially for our own church, our own community, St. Saviors. We pray, Lord, for every member of this church. We pray for all those who come week after week, who dedicate their lives, commit their lives to, to worshipping with all of your people in this space that we gather in week after week. We pray for them. We pray for your church, this church. We pray that you will help us to be the salt and light that you have called us to be in our community, right in our this corner of your kingdom. May we reflect Christ in all that we do. And Lord, we pray that you will, you will grow us as your people. Grow us, Lord. May we grow up in you more and more every day. From toddler to grown-ups, to mature, not to babies, but to mature adults in the faith. Lord, grow. And, and, and we pray, Lord, that you will attract others to you. Use us, as it were. Use us. Use our buildings as a sign to, to point people to Jesus. Use our lives as a sign to point people to Jesus. Lord, we pray for your church. We pray for your worldwide church. The community of believers everywhere in the four corners of this world. We pray, Lord, that 
you will grant us grace to be one, even as you are one with the Father, Lord Jesus, and the Spirit. So help us, we pray, to reflect that unity in Trinity, in our, in our witness for you in our world. As the Lord, we pray for your church that appears on the outside, fragmented and divided. We ask for that unity, that Trinitarian unity that exists in the Godhead will be displayed and demonstrated in the lives of your people on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, that the persecuted Christians, those who are, who are persecuted for their faith in various parts of the world, Remember those courageous Christians who, who stand up and be counted, even though it may cost them their lives. Remember those secret Christians who's, who live and worship in secret for fear of their lives. Lord, remember them and help them to be faithful in their witness for the gospel that they will remain true and that their lives will turn even their enemies to the truth of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for the world that you love so much that you gave your son O Lord Jesus Christ, to die for this world. And so, Lord, we pray for the salvation of our world. Our world is broken and, and fragmented in so many ways. And there is war. There, there's war. There's violence. There's injustice in various parts of our world. And so, Lord, save this world, we pray. Deliver the world. From, this, from the sinful, from its own sin and, 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 and destruction where, in which it's going. And people in our world, leaders, communities, tribes, villages, nations. Lord, we pray for deliverance. We pray for salvation. We pray for the end of war and violence in our world. We pray for your kingdom to come in this world, even as it is in heaven, in Ukraine, in Syria, in Sudan, and so many other parts of our world where there is conflict and violence and disharmony and hate. Let your kingdom come, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for five people on our hearts today. Five people that we know, we name before God for salvation, for deliverance, that the kingdom of God will come in their lives, in the power of your Holy Spirit, to empower them, to cleanse them, to transform them in, from darkness into light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those in our own prayer focus in our church. We pray, I won't name everyone this morning, but we pray, Lord, for these, your children, whose names we remember before you, but you know their names and their needs more than we do. Lord, remember these, your children, we pray. And uh, we ask for your intervention in their lives, for healing, for strength, for grace, 
to strengthen them. We pray for Sister Catherine, who had, had surgery yesterday, and we ask for your, for your healing touch upon her. We want to also pray for our Sister Leah as she moves to the, to the next stage of her interview process today. Lord, be with Leah. Uh, give her confidence and strength as she goes through this process. And we pray for her success. We ask, Lord, that you open this door so that she can walk into it, we pray. For your glory and for her benefit, for her career. And so, Lord, we, we submit our sister Leah to you as she goes for this interview today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as holy fire and burn in us. Come as holy wind and cleanse us. Come as holy light and lead us. Come as holy truth and teach us. Come as holy forgiveness and free us. Come as holy love and enfold us. Come as holy power and enable us. Come as holy fire, holy life, and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are wholly yours and yours alone for your using through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord grant you his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, on your journey of faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.